Well, my name's Rich Bray. Uh, I've been doing this Rocky Mountain Butterfly Project since 1995. Uh, what we've done is an inventory and monitoring project here in Rocky Mountain National Park. We put transects out in the montane, subalpine, and alpine zones, and then monitored those for a 20-week period from May 1 to September 17. Now, over the years, we've got now a 15-year database, which is shaping up to be pretty nice. I'm kind of proud of it. Lots of volunteers, over 50 volunteers have helped on this project, and all of them have done one or another crucial item. What we're looking at here, down below me here, are specimens, and these are specimens that uh, volunteers helped me set in 1998 for the interpretive rangers. We wanted to give them a collection to help them identify what the species were that were flying in the park. Now these various species uh, are all about 113 of the 141 that fly in the park. If I put my finger down here, I can show you one that I think is kind of interesting. This is the variable checker spot. And this butterfly can give you a couple of different looks. Uh, it's not always the same look that you'll get. Uh, there's great variation in how it appears, and that's how it got its name, the variable checker spot. You can see it's chrysalid over here on the far left, where my finger is. And that, of course, uh, the caterpillar created when it was uh, going through metamorphosis and, and uh, creating the chrysalis in order to uh, emerge later from that chrysalis as a butterfly. Uh, these sorts of species on the alpine are what I think are treasures here in the park. They're common. They aren't uncommon species, but they are wonderful to see and wonderful to uh, uh, look at and uh, look at the natural history when you're up on the alpine. Here's another alpine species. This species right here is the Melissa Arctic. As you might imagine, the name Arctic implies that it's a cold-loving species. It may take three years to develop into an adult butterfly. Uh, it loves the rock slides and the various uh, uh, warmth that the rocks give up on the alpine. But you can see how this, the, the uh, pattern of its, uh, its color pattern and the uh, various uh, uh, black and white mac uh, maculations would create a very good camouflage if you were in that kind of habitat. And of course, birds are predators. Uh, and particularly on the alpine. So you've got that that this particular species has to, com has to compete with. Other predators are like mice under the snow, when this is what might be in its caterpillar stage or its chrysalid stage overwintering in the winter. Mice are a predator under the snow. Uh, snow helps by mitigating uh, the temperature swings that this species would have to uh, cope with. Uh, plus the various glycols that it may manufacture in its cells to help them survive uh, uh, abrupt temperature swings. But mice are a predator, birds are a predator, and then if we look over here, here's another wonderful one, the Magdalena alpine, another neat, I think, alpine butterfly in the rock slides of the mountains. So you'd find this one in that kind of a habitat amongst the various rock slides. Notice how black it is? And that, contrasting with the dark shadows of the rock slides, give it great camouflage in that kind of habitat. We got lots of predators on these butterflies. Here's an example of a wasp that emerged from this chrysalid of a painted lady. That wasp came out and was veritasizing that chrysalid. Instead of a butterfly, out came the wasp. Over here, we've got a a uh, tachinid fly, another parasite on this monarch uh, caterpillar right there. And that chrysalid that you see, was there were about uh, 15 in that caterpillar. And when that caterpillar died and they all fell out, we raised out a couple of them. And then that fly, uh, parasitic fly, was identified by uh, 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 Mr. Hevel next door here at the Smithsonian, which has been a great help to us as we've had questions on these kinds of sorts of things. So that's a brief view of our uh, Rocky Mountain Butterfly Project. We've got a lot of data in our database and we're working on giving the park a final report. And then we'll be able also to have a 15 year uh, example of what happened to these individual species during the time that we were monitoring. And where will this collection be housed eventually or where does it go? Uh, this collection 
uh, was approved by the park for the interpretive rangers to help them identify butterflies that might be brought to them uh, so that they had a, a chance not only with the books but with the collection to see what the species was that the person had taken a picture of. Uh, so this is housed in McLaren Hall behind headquarters in the Rocky Mountain National Park and is used by the interpretive rangers. We have it today for this BioBlitz that National Geographic is sponsoring, of which we're just a small part, but we're having a great time. Thank you very much. You bet.